Hello you guys and welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about Genie Plus at Disney World. Now if you watched my most recent Disney trip vlogs in December, you saw that we did utilize Genie Plus for the first time on our Hollywood Studios day. So I will have that linked for you if you wanna check out kind of how our day unfolded and see what rides we selected and the time frame and kind of how it all played out. So I'll have that linked for you to check out. But in today's video, I'm gonna share my thoughts on how our Genie Plus day went and especially if you have a toddler, I'm gonna share a few tips that worked well for us. And then I'm also gonna share my strategy with Genie Plus moving forward on future trips. I did wanna mention that if you are unfamiliar with what Genie Plus is and you're looking for someone to break it down for you, kind of a Genie Plus 101, this is not gonna be that video. <laughs> I figured there's already so much content out there like that and so many other videos of people sharing that information and they do a great job of explaining it. So I'm gonna link a couple of resources down below in the description box for you to check out if you're interested in learning kind of the ins and outs of Genie Plus. But in today's video, we are just talking strategy. So let's dive in. So I did first want to share how our Genie Plus day went at Hollywood Studios. If you saw the vlog, then you were able to see kind of how our day played out, the different rides we selected, and the time frames and things like that, but I never really had a chance to share how our day went. So in total for our entire day, we had seven different experiences. We did two different shows, we did one meet and greet, and four rides, three of which were included with Genie Plus, and we did pay extra to purchase Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. So we had a very full day. We stayed very busy, and that was all mixed in with two sit-down table service meals. Cutting straight to the chase, I think it was 100% worth it. Even though we only utilized three Genie Plus attractions that day, we did have a toddler with us. So being able to skip the line was really valuable. So here are a couple of things I learned slash observed on our Hollywood Studios Genie Plus Day. Lightning lanes go really quick, specifically at Hollywood Studios, because there are so many heavy hitter attractions there. For the most part, everything is pretty popular, so things go really, really quick. So my recommendation would be, if you are planning Genie Plus at Hollywood Studios, Plan to start booking right at 7 a.m. Do not wait until it gets into the afternoon because things are gonna be gone and be booked up by the evening. So I would say I noticed around 4 or 5 p.m. there really wasn't much left. So make sure to book first thing in the morning because it is such a popular park with all of the popular rides. And one thing that worked really well for us with a toddler, so this is a tip if you have little ones, is don't worry about rider swap. If you have a lightning lane, Rider swap is kind of irrelevant. So rider swap is really only necessary if you are doing the standby line. But if you and your spouse or whoever, you both have lightning lanes, you just go in at separate times. So you don't have to worry about talking to a cast member or anything like that. You just ride at separate times. So if you're traveling like we did and we didn't have grandparents along with us or anything like that, it was just me and my husband, we just took turns scanning into the ride. He would get off and I would get in the lightning lane lane. <laughs> you know what I mean? So don't worry about rider swap unless you are doing the standby line. Another tip if you have little ones and you're using Genie Plus is to save the shows for your in-between time while you're waiting on your next lightning lane window to come available. So for instance, when we booked Tower of Terror, we had an hour and a half to kill until we were able to scan in. So we went ahead and got in line for the Frozen sing-along show. And that worked really great for us. Personally, I wouldn't waste a lightning lane on a show like the Disney Junior Dance Party. Again, specifically talking about Hollywood Studios, just because you wanna utilize every single hour and every single lightning lane. And if you're able to stack lightning lanes, I mean, again, I, don't, I won't get into all the technicalities of it, but it is possible to stack multiple. I think we had three at one time and it worked great. And so we were able to kind of plan out the rest of our day, but don't waste them on the shows. I just think that 
there are so many other attractions at Hollywood Studios that you want to use those lightning lanes on. So don't waste your time with a lightning lane for the Indiana Jones show or the Frozen sing-along or anything like that. Try to be really strategic with what you're getting and then fill those time gaps with the shows, if that makes sense. The last thing I'll add about our Hollywood Studios Genie Plus Day experience is that I do think we could have accomplished a little bit more, maybe one or two more rides if it had just been me and Andy. We did have our toddler with us, so of course we're moving at a slower pace meals are going slower we're stopping for diaper changes and snacks and water and you know all the things so we're not able to move as quickly and then we're also not able to scan into rides at the same time so Andy scans in and he could go ahead and book his next lightning lane but I can't and we want to book them together to make sure we get the same time slot so it just kind of delays when you can book your next attraction when you're scanning in separately so that's kind of why our day moved a little bit slower i do think we packed in as much as possible though and we were able to really take advantage of it and i'm really glad that we did it moving on next i want to share my strategy with genie plus moving forward on future trips. Now that I have that one Genie Plus day under my belt, I know what to expect now. I feel like I have a better game plan moving forward. One thing that's not gonna change on future trips is that I probably won't use Genie Plus at Animal Kingdom or Epcot. I just don't think there's enough attractions to make it worth it and I really don't think it would be something I would utilize. But Magic Kingdom and Hollywood Studios are a totally different story because there is so much to do at both of those parks attraction wise. So here's my strategy. If you have been following my channel for a while, you know that I am not a rope drop kind of girl. <laughs> That's not how Andy and I do Disney. We love to leisurely take our time in the morning. We love sit down meals. We love enjoying the different lounges. Occasionally we'll do an afternoon at the pool. I mean, we just really enjoy slowing down at Disney and just taking in all of the sights and the sounds without necessarily hitting all the rides. So here's what I would do, especially if we had time to factor in a couple of extra days, maybe a day where we do a morning at the pool and then we have just a leisurely afternoon at Magic Kingdom where we can do the People Mover and Carousel of Progress, things that you don't really need Genie Plus for and kind of take in Magic Kingdom at a slower pace. That sounds amazing to me. And then maybe we do a second Magic Kingdom day where we are up at 7 a.m. and we're booking ride after ride after ride. And then maybe that's the day where we don't do sit down meals and spend time in the lounges and things like that. Um, maybe we're not resort hopping and you know, that's what we love, but I think we would have to make that its own day. So that's kind of what I'm thinking for a Magic Kingdom day. I think if we wanted to do Genie Plus, I would make sure that we got the most out of it, but then I would also make sure that we had a second Magic Kingdom day where we could slow it down a little bit and maybe sleep in, spend some time in the pool, and then you know leave and go have dinner at the Grand Floridian Cafe, leisurely come back for the fireworks, you know, it would just be a very different style of day. So that's how I would utilize it. And I might do the same thing at Hollywood Studios. We love Baseline Tap House. We love walking around and just checking out Galaxy's Edge. We really enjoy the Hollywood Brown Derby. I mean, there's so many great things about Hollywood Studios that when you're rushing around, you just don't really get to experience. And so, you know, shopping, for instance, I love walking through gift shops, you know. But when you are committed to Genie Plus <laughs> all day long, there's not a lot of time for lounges and sit down meals and, you know, just strolling and taking in the sights and the sounds. Like you want to be on it all day long, making sure that you are getting your money's worth, making sure that you're utilizing the next lightning lane and, you know, all the things that come along with it. So I would definitely make sure that I had an extra half day at each of those parks so that we could still enjoy the other things that we enjoy at those parks that we may not necessarily have room for on a Genie Plus day. That is pretty much how I would strategize our Genie Plus days on a future trip. And kind of thinking about our week, I might do something like this. First day, I might do park day, let's do, we'll start off with a bang and do Magic Kingdom, Genie Plus, go hard. <laughs> Second day is pool day, relax, and then head to Hollywood Studios in the afternoon. Next day is Epcot, no Genie Plus. 
Next day is another pool day, relax, chill, and then head back to Magic Kingdom, no Genie Plus. And then we end the trip with Hollywood Studios, Genie Plus, go, go, go. So that's kind of what I would probably do on a future trip. And thinking about it, it would really work well for us because of the way we do Disney and the way we like to vacation. We love to take it slow. We love to sleep in. We love to stop and get a drink somewhere. All of the sit down meals, the signature meals, things like that, all of the shows. And that's what we enjoy about Disney. And so I think utilizing Genie Plus in that way where we had a full Genie Plus day, but then also kind of a half day day, pool day, where we could still enjoy the other things that we enjoy about the park, I think that would work really, really well for us. All right, well, that about sums up my thoughts on Genie Plus for our Hollywood Studios Day on our most recent trip, as well as how I would strategize using Genie Plus on a future vacation. So I hope this was helpful hearing my thoughts and kind of how I would do it. So thank you guys so, so much for watching. If you have not already checked out my December trip vlogs, definitely head over. I'll have them linked down in the description box. So thank you guys again for watching. Make sure you're subscribed if you're not already. Make sure to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you in my next one. Bye!